What makes a land a paradise? Is it luscious landscapes, a vast and rich biodiversity, rich traditions and culture, delicious food, a warm welcome? Well, what about all of the above? Now to call a land a paradise is not a small thing and what we have for you today certainly deserves this title. I'm introducing the state of Chiapas. Join us and discover this magical state to find wonders that seem from another world. Welcome back to Mexico Relocation Guide, amigos y amigas. My name is Mariana, and today we have something different for you. Today, we won't explore just one city or town, but several beautiful places around the state of Chiapas in Mexico. I'll take you to some of the most memorable landscapes in this beautiful land. We'll see rivers, waterfalls, stone walls, valleys, woods, ancient towns, the blending of cultures, and the numerous species living in one of the most stunning places in all of Mexico. I hope you're ready because you're in for a ride, so let's begin! Our adventure through these wonders started in the city of Tuxtla Gutierrez, which is Chiapas capital. Tuxtla is situated in the center of the state and serves as the administrative and economic hub of the state of Chiapas. The city was inhabited by Zoques and Sotziles before the arrival of Spanish conquistadores, and its original name was Coyatoc, which means place of rabbits in the Zoque language. Nowadays, Tuxtla is the largest city in Chiapas and it's a significant urban center in the region. To get here, you need to take an international flight to the Angel Albino Airport, which is 30 to 40 minutes away from the city's downtown. You can also get here by driving, either by taking an ADO bus or with your own car. Tuxtla has a lot of museums, like the Regional Museum of Chiapas, the Eliseo Palacios Paleontology Museum, the Coffee Museum, the Marimba Museum, and so much more. There are also several parks, as well as lots of restaurants, bars, street food, nightclubs, and pretty much everything a capital city has to offer. Now, to be completely honest, the city itself may have a grimmer look than if we compare it to the well-known beautiful town of San Cristobal de las Casas. But I think that's exactly the biggest mistake one can make, is comparing places. In any case, if you decide to give Tuxla a try, we definitely recommend you walk around the central area. From the Calzada de las Personas Ilustres to Morelos Park, you'll find a great deal of activities and interesting landmarks to visit. The most visited park and considered the main square is the Marimba Park. Marimba is a musical instrument part of the percussion realm. It is believed that a version of the marimba was introduced by African slaves brought to Mexican territory during the colony. The modern marimba was invented in Chiapas during the last decade of the 19th century, and it's one of the major symbols of the state. Around Marimba Park, you'll find a number of restaurants, bars, street food, handcrafts, coffee shops, libraries, and a very lively environment. There are also interesting markets in the central area like Juan Sabines Market, the San Roque Market, and the Rafael Pascaecio Market, just to mention a few. There are also local traditional markets where people come and make most of their groceries, and you can also try some of Chiapas delights like Cochito, Chalupas, or Tascalate. It's definitely worth a visit. Now, probably the biggest appeal to Tuxla is its proximity to some of the most beautiful natural wonders you'll ever see on Earth. At about 20 to 30 minutes, you'll find the Cañón del Sumidero National Park, one of the most iconic places in Chiapas and in Mexico for that matter. The canyon is a geological fault that was formed over 50 million years ago. The Cañón del Sumidero National Park has a bit over 21,000 hectares, and the total extension of the canyon is somewhere around 25 kilometers, or around 15.5 miles. It starts in the town of Chiapa de Corzo and goes all the way to the Chico Asen Dam. The height of its cliffs goes from 1970 feet to about 3,280 feet, and it's home to a great diversity of species and climates. Here you can see tropical vegetation on the lower parts of the canyon and pines and oaks on the higher parts. The same goes for animals since you have a lot of species of birds, but also crocodiles, jaguars, spider monkeys, just to mention a few. Thank you. 
In 1980, the federal government declared the site as a national park. So efforts are made to preserve the biodiversity as well as allowing tourists from all over the world to wander with such magnificent beauty. To get here from Tuxla, you can either run a car and go by yourself. Just be aware that you'll have to pay a 35 peso per person fee for the entrance. Now, if you don't want to go through the hassle of driving yourself, you can book a tour, which I highly recommend. It'll take you to the national park, then to Chiapa de Corso, where you'll hop on a boat and tour around the river. Basically, this tour allows you to see the canyon from the very top and then experience it from the bottom. To find a tour agency, I recommend going to the Marimba Park. There, you'll see several agencies and tour guides selling all sorts of packages to different sites and experiences in Chiapas. The cost of the Sumidero tour goes from 600 to 750 pesos per person, depending on the agency. This is a half-day tour. They pick you up from your hotel around 9 a.m. and then drop you off at 6 p.m. Now, if you go on a tour, chances are you'll start by going to the National Park site, or as people call it, Miradores del Cañón. They take you to the top of the cliffs where there are five different viewpoints. The last one is the tallest one with a depth of a thousand meters, and it's breathtaking. Words don't even do it justice. It's really spectacular. On the last viewpoint, there's a handcraft store where you can take home some of the regional creations. You'll find things like clothing, jewelry, books, ornaments, and probably the most iconic item of the region, which is amber. A piece of advice don't bargain with the vendors. I know bargaining is considered Mexican culture, but I assure you that if you ask an artisan for them to lower their prices to sell to tourists, the answer will be, of course not. When they quote a price, take into consideration not only the materials, but also the time it takes for the artisan to make this, effort, and creativity that they put into their craft. The best thing to do if you feel the price is too high is just walk away and seek another vendor that matches the amount you are willing to pay. To avoid being taken advantage of by the so-called gringo tax, I recommend you do your due diligence on the fair market price of handcrafts by asking locals. But keep in mind that if something is done by hand, it won't be cheap. Some pieces can take months to get done, and these people are true artists, even if their craft is not shown in fancy galleries. Now, you also have to consider the time and effort it takes them to bring their handcrafts from their nearby villages to the town of Chapa de Corso. Now, Chiapa de Corso is located 15 kilometers or about nine miles away from Tuxla's downtown, and it's on the banks of the river. Before the Spanish colonization, the region was inhabited by the Socotones, which is the original name of the Chiapanecas people. Diego de Mazariegos founded the Villa Real de Chiapa on March 1st, 1528. Now, due to its climate conditions and the conquest of the San Cristobal Valley, all Spanish residents moved to San Cristobal, back then called Chiapa de los Españoles. Only native indigenous people and some priests remained in Chiapa de Corso, back then called Chiapa de los Indios. This is one of the only towns in Mexico that displays a style of architecture known as Mudejar. The Church of Santo Domingo, built in the 16th century, and the famous La Pila Fountain, also built in the 16th century, are prime examples of the style of architecture characteristic of the Renaissance. In 2012, the title of Pueblo Mágico was granted to Chiapa de Corso, prompting a boom in tourism. Now, besides its rich history and precious moments, one of the highlights of this charming town is that it works as a gateway to the Sumidero Canyon. To hop on a boat and tour the entirety of the canyon through the waters of the river, you need to go to El Embarcadero, which is near the Santo Domingo Church in Chiapa de Corso. The beginning of the canyon is marked by the famous Belisario Dominguez Bridge. From here on out, you'll start seeing and feeling the beauty and energy of this place. If you want to experience some true local Chiapanecan food and Chiapas traditional dishes, I recommend the tasajo and salsa de pepita, which is a piece of meat baked on pepita sauce. Pepita is a name given in South Mexico to pumpkin seeds. In Chiapas and some other states in South and Southeast Mexico, it's widely used to make some kinds of mole that is sometimes called pipián. Tasajo is the given name of this region for a beefsteak. Now, needless to say, this is a 10 out of 10 dish. And if you get thirsty, I really recommend a agua de chia, which is a delicious beverage combining lemon or lime and chia seeds with water. It's kind of like a chia lemonade, really good for the digestion. Mm -hmm. 
In this little market, we found bosh, an ancestral drink in Chiapas. This is a liquor that you obtain from distilling corn. The Mayas have been producing this drink since pre-Hispanic times, so it's a very ancient drink. Nowadays, there are several artisanal producers of this drink in the area, so it won't be hard to find it. Same as mezcal, the recommendation is to drink it in little sips. You don't shoot it. I do want to say that these tours are also available in San Cristobal de las Casas, and actually you'll find them probably at lower prices versus Tuxtla's agencies. However, if you want to pay a visit to Chiapas's capital, see what it's like and see what it has to offer, then why not start here? Where are you watching us from? I would love to know, so let me know in the comments of this video. And don't forget to like this video if you're liking this overview of Chiapas. Now, even though these cities and towns aren't necessarily places I'd recommend living in, I would say they are wonderful places Places to visit. And if you're planning to live in Mexico, you're probably wondering what kinds of landmarks you should see outside of the popular cities that we talk about on our channel. So having said that, let's move on to El Chiflon Waterfalls. The next two places are some of the most stunning I have ever seen in my life. El Chiflon Waterfalls and the Montebello Lakes. Once again, we recommend taking a tour unless, of course, you have your own car. If you decide to book a tour, the cost should be around 700 to 900 pesos per person. This is an all-day tour, so be ready to spend a lot of time on the road and be prepared to do a bit of walking. Las Cascadas del Chiflón is an ecotourism park that is located near the town of Tzimol, in the central east part of Chiapas. El Chiflón roughly translates to the loud whistle, and it was given this nickname because it is said that when the wind blows, you can hear the waterfall's whistle. Pretty neat, huh? The park itself consists of a system of five waterfalls that are fed by the flow of the San Vicente River. The name of the waterfalls are El Suspiro, Ala de Ángel, Velo de Novia, Arcoiris, and Quinceañera. If you take the tour, your entrance is already included in the cost, but if you come here on your own, then you can expect to pay 80 pesos per person to enter the park. Once you go in, you'll see why I say this place is stunning. Right away, you'll see the course of the river with natural pools of turquoise water inviting you to go in and enjoy a refreshing swim. To see all the waterfalls, you have to follow the paved trail that extends for almost a mile. The first ones you'll see are El Suspiro and Ala de Ángel, with a 25 and 30 meter fall. Then you'll get to a stairway with almost a thousand steps that will lead you to this big star of the park. And that's the Velo de Novia waterfall with over 80 meters of fall. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. You'll be able to hear its roar since you start the ascent, and once you're there, you'll be rewarded with some of the most gorgeous views in all of Chiapas. You can even go up to a viewpoint that will put you right in front of the waterfall. You'll get soaking wet, but it's totally worth it. It's truly an energizing experience. next waterfall is called Arcoiris, which translates to rainbow. And as soon as you see it, you'll understand why. There's always a rainbow in its natural pool, and the view from the waterfall is out of this world. I wasn't able to keep going to the last waterfall, Quinceañera. It was too hard, and we had to keep moving. So to go down to an alternative other than just turning back and using your feet, there's a zip line with three stations. The zip line experience has an extra cost, of course, and it depends on how high you want to jump from. There's a station right at Velo de Novia, which costs 300 pesos per person. Person. That extends 600 meters. Then you have another station at 400 meters for 250 pesos, and then the last one at 300 meters for 200 pesos. Piece of advice, I mentioned the extension of the park being almost a mile. I also mentioned that it's almost a thousand steps to see the waterfalls. So I really suggest wearing comfy walking shoes and light clothing. I also recommend bringing some water and some snacks. And I also recommend to be well rested. I'm not saying this is like running an Ironman, but it does take some physical effort to enjoy the hike. So just come ready for that. The tour gives you two full hours to explore the park. Once everyone is back in the van, it's time to get a book or get a comfortable nap because it's a two hour ride from El Chiflon to the Montebello Lakes. 
The Parque Nacional Lagunas de Montebello is located on the eastern side of Chiapas, right at the border with Guatemala. It's part of the municipality of La Trinitaria. It was the first natural area declared a national park in Chiapas back in 1959. In 2003, it entered the Ramsar Convention, which is a UNESCO program dedicated to the preservation of wetlands all over the world, aiming for a conscious consumption of water by establishing sustainable practices. This is one of those places taking from a fairy tale. Magical is the best word to, to describe it. The amount of biodiversity here is truly outrageous. I mean, the data shows that there are over 150 species of orchids, over 90 species of fungi, 65 different types of mammals, 35 types of reptiles, and its main resident, 277 different species of birds, including the mighty Quetzal. This endangered species is sacred in Mayan culture. But of course, the main things to view here are the lakes themselves. It is also said that these lakes showcase the most beautiful and clean colors in the whole country. They have crystal clear turquoise to pitch black waters. The site is mesmerizing. There are a total of 59 lakes in the park and it extends to a total of 6,000 hectares. Now, if you come on your own, the entrance fee is 35 pesos per car. First stop was the Five Lakes, which as the name suggests, it's a system of five interconnected lakes. We were only able to look at it for a few minutes, take some pictures, and then head back to our tour van. However, if you come on your own, you'll obviously have more time. In this lake, you can take part in different activities. So there are kayaks for rent, as well as raft rides for about 150 pesos a person. There are some spots of the lake that are also swimmable. Then you move on to Bohoj Lake, where we spent most of the time here our guide made the question, are you guys hungry? And at the right place and time, everybody was. So the first thing we did was have some queso asado, which is a traditional dish in this particular region of Chiapas. It was made right then and there. One of the girls put a big banana leaf on a comal and on top of it, a block of cheese with pumpkin flour, then some beans, rice, chorizo, a little salad, and voila, simply delicious. After a tasty meal, you'll head to the shore where the rafts are. These services are provided by the community that runs the national park. All of them are natives of this region. They offer three different rides, a short ride, mid, and a long ride. The prices go from 100, 150, and 200 pesos per person. Now we took the middle one, which grants you an hour, and your guide takes you to a nearby cenote, where you're allowed to help with the rowing. This is more of a tiny deep lake with an emerald water that resembles a cenote, but still the site is beautiful. From this island, you can take a swim since it has a little beach with a shallow and not so cold water. It's perfect for refreshing if you come here in the middle of spring. After this delight tour of Lake Bohok, it's time to move to the next and final stop, Lake Siskal. This is the biggest lake of all the park and the landscape here is gorgeous. You're also allowed to swim here as well as stay some nights if you want to. There are wood cabins on site starting at 600 pesos a night. Now that's what I call a bargain. The other appeal of this area of the park is that you're right at the border with Guatemala. Mala. There's a market where you can buy handcrafts, clothing, snacks, and some local delights like coffee or cacao grown in the region, both of which are delicious. Now, if you keep walking inside the market, you will eventually see another little lake called the International Lake. A Mexican flag and a sign that says, Limit of the United States of Mexico will appear. You can keep walking without hesitation. There's nobody asking for any sort of documentation. As soon as you step in, you are officially in Guatemala, and you'll see their flag and a big mural welcoming you into their land. Our final tour around this beautiful land was to two emblematic towns in the Chiapas Highlands. After experiencing the magic of Chiapas natural wonders, we wanted a taste of its unique cultural identity. The towns we're talking about are Sinacantan and San Juan Chamula. Both of them are well known for being self-governed towns. This means that the townspeople determine their own rules based on their own customs and traditions. The region where the towns are located is mainly inhabited by several Mayan communities, such as Tzotziles, Celtales, Mames, Tojolables, and choles. The common way to refer to the people from these communities is chamulas. Most of these towns have found ways to preserve most of their ancient practices, their own form of social organization, and political system. For starters, here 
you won't even hear Spanish. Their official language is Sotzil, and there are different dialects of this tongue. They do speak Spanish, but it is their second language, so don't be surprised if your Spanish and their Spanish is not that good. You'll also notice that their garments are completely unique. Women tend to use a variation of a Mexican huipil, which is a hand-stitched blouse with floral decorations and a black, thick wool skirt. It's meant to protect themselves from the cold temperatures of the area since the region is over 2,200 meters above sea level. They preserve the tradition of trading goods with one another instead of money, and these aspects are just a little scratch on the surface of the complexity of these communities and their traditions. Now the first stop is Sinacantan, a town that is famous for its prosperous production of flowers, the ancient practice and expertise with the telar de cintura, and their peculiar mixing of cultures and religious practices. The word Sinacantan translates to the place of bats in the Nahuatl language. It is said that the Spanish conquest of this region was pacific and that Tzotzuiles agreed to yield their land and convert to Catholicism. Now, because of this supposed pacific submission, the Tzotzuiles were able to keep their land and preserve some of their rituals and traditions. So, as you can see, today, you can still witness some of these cultural and religious activities. Here, the main attractions are the temple dedicated to San Lorenzo, which was built in 1546. While on the van, we were told that, same as in San Juan Chamu, the use of cameras was forbidden in San Lorenzo's church. However, once we got there, the elder of the town told our guide that we were going to be allowed to take pictures and get footage of the interior of the temple. Just something for you to keep in mind in case you don't come with a tour. The church was built in colonial style of architecture and it's a magnificently preserved building. Inside, you can witness the mixing of religious as there are altars with Mayan symbolism. Here, there are also different interpretations of the Christian cross, as it is not used to represent the crucifixation, but rather represents kind of a portrayal to communicate with their deities or saints to pray for good harvest. After contemplating the beauty of San Lorenzo's temple and learning a little bit about their traditions, we visited a house and workshop of a group of women to learn about the ancient tool named Telar de Cintura. It consists of two sticks of the same size holding two groups of threads, a vertical one and a horizontal one, that transverse each other, effectively creating a grid. It has a strap tied around the user's waist and the other extreme is tied to a tree or a pole. To see them work is mesmerizing, it's truly unique. They usually kneel on the floor and work for hours in this position. Depending on how big, it can take weeks or even months to get one single piece done. They showed and explained the whole process, answered all our questions, invited us to get into their traditional costume, take pictures, and then they treated us to nice homemade breakfasts. Beans, handmade tortillas, spicy salsas, and a bit of cheese just did the trick. Once again, everything was incredibly good. And after a warm welcoming by the people of Sinacantan, it was time to hop back on our tour and go to the next top, which is the town of San Juan Chamula. Much is said about San Juan Chamula, especially since it's been gaining attention from tourists. Sometimes you'll hear that it's kind of dangerous, that it's best not to visit, or that people are rude. But the truth is, none of this is true. San Juan Chamula is simply a self-governed town with little to no tolerance for the disrespect of their traditions and culture. They have their own hierarchy system and hold their own elections. A group of men called mayoles are the police figures who dress in white wool vests and are in charge of keeping everything in order. The history of San Juan Chamula is not really documented. However, it is known that the region has been inhabited by Sotziles since way before the colonization. The first contact with Spanish conquistadores was in 1524 when they conquered the region and evangelized the community. The figure of the elders here is very important, and San Juan Chamula is a living example of a social phenomenon of syncretism, which refers to the successful blending of two different religious beliefs. Now, as I said, they have their own rules and a tourist fee is needed to enter if you aren't a resident of the town. The guide immediately told us to be careful with our camera. Again, 
It's not dangerous, but they really don't like being photographed without permission. It is known in the community that photographs kind of captures the soul. Now, once we entered the town, we walked straight to the San Juan Bautista Church. There's a 20 peso fee to go inside. You can take pictures and videos outside without a problem. However, before entering, you'll see signs and men at the door that will remind you that no pictures or videos of any kind are allowed inside the church. Since we couldn't film much, I recommend you come and see it for yourself. It's truly fascinating. But again, be mindful of respecting their culture and traditions. So I hope that you've loved every second of Chiapas. If you haven't been here, what are you waiting for? I must say that this kind of place is the kind of place that magical stories are written about. I mean, it truly is an outdoor enthusiast playground. It's paradise. It's a fascinating place. It's a whole experience. It's truly energizing. And just let me tell you what I've shown you today is just a little bit of Chiapas. I began by saying this is a vast and rich land and believe me when I say so. In Chiapas, there are mountains, beaches, jungle, woods, rivers, lakes, caves, canyons, and all kinds of archeological sites, plus a wide range of ecosystems that you wouldn't believe. This place is alive, and when you're here, you can feel it breathing through its culture, its people, their traditions, all the scents, colors, textures, food, and I could go on forever. Chepas is true magic. So thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate your precious time. I hope you guys like what we're doing here at Mexico Relocation Guide. It's truly my pleasure to bring this content to you. So don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying these videos. And give Chiapas a try. Come and see it for yourself. Who knows? Maybe you will fall in love and decide to stay forever. So stay tuned for all the upcoming videos. Nos vemos muy pronto. Hasta luego.